The mid to late 2010s became a turning point for sports uniforms as it seemed each and every league needed to find a new way to push out new jerseys out the door after exhausting who knows how many alternates and throwbacks. In 2015, Nike introduced Color Rush to the NFL, which I've already covered in a previous video, and later in 2017 also introduced City jerseys to the NBA, which I'll look at some other day. It's just taking longer than expected, sorry. Just before the season's City jerseys were introduced, Majestic introduced players weekend for MLB in August 2017. The whole idea initially was mixing primary and secondary team colors on old school pullover vests. Some use alternate logos and others use throwback logos and colors in their jerseys with XFL inspired nicknames on the back. They were colorful and fun looking until one day they weren't. With the help of CC Sabathia and two random former Blue Jays, as well as reps from MLB and the Players Association, this idea came to life and was an instant success. Granted, some jerseys almost looked the same, just with different fronts, but it was a nice burst of color that Nike's Color Rush wishes it was. Unlike that uniform program, this uses two colors, so you're not overwhelmed by a giant block of one color on the field, and not just because the players continued wearing their appropriate home and road pants. The main inspiration was youth sportswear, and looking at all the offerings, yeah, you can see that aspect. The uniforms also featured thank you patterns, Matches for the players to shout out whomever influenced their careers, mostly to players' mom and dads, which I think is pretty sweet. Like mentioned earlier, the players had the freedom to put nicknames on the back much like the XFL did in its original incarnation, and most did just that. Later it would be expanded to using emojis, which is kinda cringe if I'm honest. In the first year, there weren't really any duds. Yeah, I had one of these in every MLB team's worst uniform, but that's more on the Tigers not having many uniforms in their history than and how good or bad players weekend was. So how do you follow up success? By doing the same thing again! Well, some teams kept the same jerseys but with different hats for players weekend 2018 from the previous year whereas others changed for one reason or another. And hey, it was still a hit! Still nice and colorful with good reception by critics and fans. Majestic was riding high and 2019 was the final year of their contract with MLB. And how did they end their tenure? With a whimper. Oh boy, this was a mistake. Now, let me rewind to the Little League Classic from 2019, which occurred before Players Weekend that year. The first two years featured Pirates vs. Cardinals and Phillies vs. Mets. Both times, each team wore their Players Weekend jerseys. 2019 would be the first year exclusive uniforms were worn for that game. Those uniforms that the Cubs and Pirates wore were immaculate and seemed like the logical next step for Players Weekend jerseys. The Pirates jerseys had the Berg on the front, while the Cubs sported Cubbies. They looked great and were all complete with the nicknames on the back. Yeah, they're based on Little League jerseys, something that would continue into the Nike era, but Players Weekend jerseys were based on the youth section of merchandise anyway, so I'd say it's fitting. Players Weekend followed less than a week after, and instead of continuing Players Weekend in a colorful way, Majestic made all the uniforms monochromatic in either all black or all white. No exaggeration, all of them. Nobody liked this, including the players. Honestly, does this look at all interesting to you? The pitcher of the white team even had to wear a black hat so as to not distract the batter too much. If it gets to that point, then maybe you should scrap the idea and start over. The Cubs even protested this by wearing their regular blue hats in their first game that weekend, after which the league scolded them and forced them to wear the designated white hats. On to more detail with the uniforms. Come on. White on white and black on black? Yeah, the team names, nicknames, and numbers were outlined in silver, which stood out on the black jerseys. The white jerseys, not so much. If you're in the stands or watching a game on TV, can you even tell what any of these white jerseys say? Probably not. I mean, what were they thinking? Spy versus spy? Chess? And of course, the worst part, with every team wearing either all black or all white, every game looked the same that weekend. No variation like any other day. Black team versus white team. That's all you got. So, 2020 came and Nike took over after Under Armour couldn't cough up the money to do MLB merch like originally intended, and Players Weekend was gone. Would Nike have continued Players Weekend if COVID didn't disrupt the 2020 season? I doubt it after the monochrome disaster. Besides, Players Weekend now has been replaced by the City Connect jersey program. Honestly, given how amazing and fun the first two years were, I'd say Players Weekend was worth the endeavor. But after 2019, that all just put a bad taste in everyone mouths, like a bad ending to a good show. If Nike was to bring this back, which 
I highly doubt. Then I'd like the colorful aspects to return instead of this monochrome bullcrap. But due to City Connect and Nike's insistence that all MLB teams streamline their uniform lineups, Players Weekend is just going to fade away like a memory and then decades later we'll have videos about it going, remember that? What were they thinking? So anyways, be sure to leave a comment, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all later.